Hello and welcome to part 7 of the second of the three weekly lessons about Oracle JET. JET includes a collection of components, patterns and enhanced HTML tags that you can use to control the visual layout and navigation on your page. JET uses what is referred to as an HTML forward design approach. This allows developers to use the HTML5 specification, specifically the semantic elements of HTML, as the foundation of a good page layout. By using HTML elements such as header, footer, section and so on, your application will be that much more ready for meeting accessibility guidelines, as well as making the HTML code much easier to read. After you have the basic structure of your HTML defined, you can use JET components such as OJ Collapsible, OJ Accordion, OJ Navigation List and Off Canvas Utils to control the initial page content display and allow the user to access additional content by expanding sections or selecting a tab. The architecture of tabs and how you use them has been redesigned over recent releases of JET. Let's go into the tab bar section of the Oracle JET cookbook and take a look at how tabs are done. The applicable HTML element is OJ tab bar. And within the OJ tab bar, you define an unordered list, as can be seen here. A variety of different tab bars is defined in the cookbook, as always. What is especially useful to take a look at is the example at the end using Switcher, which enables you to show and hide content beneath the tab bar relating to the currently selected tab. Take a look at the info section here, and you will see that there is an OJ Switcher component, which you need to set up in your define block. And then you are able to use OJ Switcher, an HTML element, to define the content beneath the tab bar. As a quick example, notice that here we have three tabs, and as we switch to a different tab, different content is displayed within it. How that is defined in our code is shown here. We have an OJ tab bar, and we have an OJ Switcher. Importantly, the slot attribute of each item within the tab must match the ID of each tab. Here we have three tabs with ID set to home, getting started and settings. And beneath that we have an OJ switcher with the slot set to those same IDs. This is how the tabs match up with their content. Navigation components such as OJ conveyor belt, OJ film strip and OJ train use visual arrows or dots that the user can select to move backward or forward through data. In the next code demo, you'll learn about the OJ film strip component. Here we are in the Oracle Jet cookbook. We're in the film strip section, and as always, you see a wide variety of different variations that you definitely need to explore before you start working with the film strip component or any other component. Very carefully explore the variations and the related code, and you might find features that you were not expecting and that could really add value to your application. In the case of our code example, we're going to specifically take a look at the film strip, so the error visibility and the error placement we don't need, and directly inside of the code, we can just remove that so that we can take a better look at the code that is relevant to what we are trying to do. This cleans up the code quite a bit. We click apply and we only have our film strip. So here it is. And what you notice here, first of all, is a knockout for each loop. Using knockout for each, the film strip traverses the chemicals that are defined on the JavaScript side of the code. And for each of those, a div is created with an OJ panel with a specific background. In the meantime, however, when you look in the Oracle JET cookbook in the framework section, you will find a section called binding and control flow. And in the for each binding section, you will find that there is a special custom element syntax for doing for each loops, which you can use as an alternative to the knockout for each loop. In fact, you are recommended to use this approach. The knockout specific approach is not recommended anymore from Oracle JET 4.1 onwards and in time will be deprecated. So take a look at the OJ bind for each and try and apply that to the OJ film strip example.
In our code, we see we have a list of chemicals. And in our view, we see OJ film strip. And this reference we can use because we have referenced the OJ film strip component in our define block. And then the OJ bind for each is used. For each of the chemicals, which we can refer to as chemical very conveniently, a template is applied and we get the data from the chemical, the data attribute, and from that we get the name. And that name is placed within a span element. Not only do you see here OJ bind for each, but you also see OJ bind text, which is also new from Oracle Jet 4.1 onwards. And we can very conveniently use that in the context of this example. In standard knockout, here you would use a data bind attribute, but Jet provides its own custom element syntax, which is more convenient, easier to read, and the standard way of working with Jet. And when our resolution allows for it, we can see that we have an arrow on the right and an arrow on the left for scrolling left and right through the data that is provided by our view model. A common layout pattern in modern applications is the dashboard. JET provides the OJ masonry layout component to help you with this type of layout. It's not designed to be a complete page layout, but rather for laying out specific data in one section of the page. You can also use OJ Dialog and OJ Pop-up components to present additional information to the user on demand. Deciding on when to use Dialog versus a pop-up can be tricky. If the panel will contain form elements or action buttons, it would usually be best to use a Dialog. If the purposes of the container is mainly informative, then the pop-up would normally be used. In this part, you have been introduced to a range of JET components that help you to control the visual layout and navigation on your page. For your homework for this part, take the tab bar or the navigation list or another navigation component that you might have used during this part of the course and replace it with an OJ train component, which you probably will not have used yet so far. Take the OJ train component from the cookbook and replace one of the existing components that you have been using for navigation throughout this part of the course with an OJ train. And with that, thanks for participating in the course and we'll see you in the next part.